Awesome. So what we need to do now is, uh, Shannon, what I'd kind of like to do is I'd like to have you kind of come up and run a small little exercise where we figure out what we're going to add to this corporation. And we're not even going to worry about what we're going to sell right now, but just briefly, let's see if we can figure out five, six items that we want to like sell from this corporation. We need to add the system. We need to load the system. Our goal is to load this guy right here in the general inventory pool, okay? Shannon, nothing exists. There's no vendors. There are no nothing. But I would like to use uh, Microsoft Word, if you're okay, and kind of just plan it out, and yes. we'll figure out what we have going on. Okay, so let's, while she's coming up here, what are we wanting to sell for this particular industry? Okay. So soil. Soil. That's great. That's great. Um, why don't you go ahead and kill that taking the break thing off, that, just so it's not off the top there. Okay, items to sell. We're going to do soil, seeds. Got to have fish poop fertilizer. <laughs> exactly, okay. Yes. That sounds Pat green Bono. and organic, huh? Yeah, Pat Bono. Yeah. Pat Bono. <laughs> okay, I would imagine something like uh, some bark chips, like some sort of, like, usually they have some sort of mulch or chips. Lighting. Mm. Okay. Lights. Lights. Uh, containers. Yep, like yeah, flats. Right. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, plants. Natural plants, that's fine. We are going to sell plants at some point. That's fine. So, so what we're doing is we're basically, you'll notice how we did not go right into Atlas and start just doing things, okay? This is my, one of my biggest recommendations. This is almost like getting paper and pencil out and saying, what do I want? And the, the way that we kind of categorize things, and once you learn this, you can be like, oh, oh my goodness, I can do anything I want. Eventually, your path ends up going vendor, category, and then item. Okay, and then your items can be unlimited underneath those categories. Very similar to how she did it here. Your vendor, who are you going to get it from? What category is it going to be? And eventually, what is the item going to end up being? So what we're doing right here for soil, these either may be categories or items, depending on how we want to kind of determine it. Okay? Awesome. Okay, Shannon, go ahead and lead out. Tell us where you would like things to go. Okay. Are we, so we're just doing this as, well, these are kind of our categories Those right are, now. Those are categories. Oh, I would say categories. Us. And so do we want to put specific items underneath Not our soil. categories? Soil. So, I mean, we have soil, but. but the hydro farm would be the vendor. Okay, oh. correct, correct. So we'll probably end up putting it somewhere under, like, Greenway supplies or something like this, Greenway yeah. products, okay? Well, it, we don't have to. It depends where we get it. If we're just going to sell soil as soil, then we can bring it in from anywhere and we'll just set it up under ourselves. Okay. So now so how many are there different types of soils or are we just gonna sell one generic type? There's, there's different types. Okay. So Shannon, underneath we soils can put like a silt loam or what kind of how do they sell them in stores? I've never bought soil. Um, Potting there's, soil? There's some with mulch in it. There's some with, um, I don't know, what are the right things called? Uh, Organic with the fertilizer in it. Organic, um, nutrient-based. Organic growing soil. There's, there's all sorts of soil. We can just put That's two. Fine. We don't have That's to put right. So basically, once again, you'll, you'll see how she's kind of, kind of starting to cascade some of her pieces. What she's doing is she's virtually planning right here so that when she actually hits the system, boom, she's got a map and she's ready to roll and run. Okay. So we can get some seeds. What seeds? I heard Santi say that we wanted tomatoes earlier. Pumpkins. Oh, so. We're getting close to oh, Halloween. Oh, it is Halloween time. And uh, pumpkins. You need, you need a kid. Um, you know, peppers. Yeah. Season. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll lots of peppers. <coughs> Pepper seeds. Oh, there's all sorts. We can even stop with three just to get an idea. Basically, what we're doing is we're trying to kind of show you Fertilizer. that. Fertilizer. I heard fish. What do they call that? There's a special name for it, but I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> fish fertilizer. I don't remember what it's called. Hi, nitrogen. There you go. Bat <laughs> Manure. Generic manure. Whoa. That's not how you spell manure. Uh, how about just a regular NPK? Okay, so 
<clears throat> mulch? Do we just? There's a bunch of mulch. Oak. Pine straw. Pine straw. Rubber tires. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Are you that's good and green. Mold? That's good and green. Yeah, well, that doesn't seem. It's recycled. Yeah, <laughs> okay. it is recycled, but uh, still. Okay, light. UV. 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 Um, LED. 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 Okay. And containers. What do we need to do for our containers? Uh, Just sizes, maybe. Yeah. Buckets. Small, bags. medium, large. Yeah, so so that you could basically depending on your industry you can see how it kind of slowly grows and grows and grows, but it depends on what's going on. And we're not going to enter all of this just for the, yeah. the demo purpose. Actually, what we may is we may end up doing it. We may end up going like this. We may end up saying, Cool, here's our generic piece of the puzzle. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, and let's load this system. Let's see if we can load it. Okay? So this is great, this is perfect. Um, if, do you guys have paper and pencil, or does anybody need anything? Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to end up giving you a category and a bunch of the pieces underneath it, and then we'll help you load the system. Okay. We'll, we'll do a bunch of these. Okay. So, you want me to go ahead and do with the first one? Yes. We're going to go through a small demo to do it, and maybe what we'll end up doing is uh, um, I'm not sure what time they're planning on lunch or anything. I'm about noon, about. and then uh, he's going to write now. Okay. And then. Uh, whenever we want to stop doing that's up okay. To us. Let's let's go for another fifteen or twenty minutes, easy, and then we'll do kind of like a lunch. And then what we may or may not do if we're not done with it, we'll come back and we'll kind of we'll, we'll cycle right into this level. Okay. Perfect, Shannon. Can you take us through a general? Yes, definitely. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we want to bring in a purchase order. I'm just going to come to your map really quick here. So we want to get all these items into our inventory right here, our general inventory pool. So we are going to create a purchase order to bring it in, and we're going to put it as the vendor is going to be ourself. We're going to put it under Greenway Products. Is that what we just said to call it? Yeah, and then so, we're going to go to PR homepage, correct? Correct. Now, now, here's one thing that's interesting. Now, you have another little small decision. Can you go back to your, your Word document for yeah, just a second? Okay. Okay, now some of these are going to be specific to like a specific vendor. You're going to get them from a specific vendor. And other ones you're like, I don't even care. You know what? The bat guano is bat guano. I don't care if I get it from A, B, C, or D. At that point, you would say, I'm going to create a generic item, and then I'll, I'll set my payables up so that I'm going to pay company A and company B and company C. But my items need to be generic. I just want to get bat guano. I don't want bat guano company A. That guano company B. I don't necessarily want to detail it out to that level. That's what I would call a generic item. Okay, but some things may be specific, specific. Like when you actually get into like some of the actual plants or the lighting Lights. or mm -hmm. like Lush lighting, LED. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like specific, specific. It might be like it's basically the difference between saying you know like, hey, am I just going to go get the Walmart brand or am I looking specifically for the XYZ brand type thing. Like how how detailed is it? We we may have some that are, are vendor specific. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. For us though right now, we're going to put it in under our cellar. So I'm just going to come here. There's a lot of different ways you could go in and you could start a new PO. We're going to have to search for a vendor. Actually, I could even just go vendor and go right there, but it takes me here. I have to search for a vendor either way, and we're going to call ourselves Greenway Products, right? So I'm going to add a new vendor. This is going to be us, Green, whoa, Greenway Products. We're here in Colorado. We're at the Moose Lodge. <laughs> yeah. Denver. And okay. All right, so we're going to add ourselves as a payee. So it's already got us in there as the vendor. We're ready to create our purchase order. And this one, we're just going to do a basic live. This is just under ourselves. We are setting up our basic inventory. Basic inventory. Okay, we don't know the amount. We'll come back and we'll fix that later. 
And yes, we have the items in our possession. So we'll add the PO and we will start adding line items. So now we're just going to put them into the system. So we're going to search for our items. That's how we're going to do this. And we can come back and look at our list right now. I'm going to add, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to add some categories really quick. And I could add the categories later, but we'll just do it right now because we already know we have those categories we want to add. So I am going to go actually to my... There, there's, it says grow item homepage on the top right corner. Oh, there it is. So basically this is technically I think your used parts, to that name. <laughs> parts homepage. But as you get used to your, your verbiage within your company, oh, grow items is parts. That's grow items is your parts category. Okay, our grow items parts. Perfect. And we want to... And you know what we may end up wanting to do? Instead of actually calling it grow items, I would recommend that we call it items because that's so much more generic in, in my mind, okay? So Shannon, how can yeah. we change grow items into just items? We can go back and switch it in our corp-wide settings. Let's have you do that real quick just yeah. so we can all play along. So we'll There's already a bunch in there, too. We'll manage our corp info there, there's a, What is there? There's a bunch of stuff under uh, grow items. There's uh, fertilizer, hydro soil, uh, well, those two, and then the other ones that are part of your... And so they already have some inventory. Okay. Yeah. And here, let's see, I'm not actually sure where it's at, but we'll find it. Okay, it's goat fertilizer. Goat fertilizer. <laughs> That's great. Okay, stop right there. Throw items. There we yep. go. Just change that to items. And then change the next one down to item. And then change that next one to just items and inventory. That's great. And that one. So hang on, this that one right here where it says the default part number, why don't we call it item number on number 42? Just with the shorthand, is that what we're going uh, to Whatever you want to do. Okay. okay. All right, is that all we need awesome. to change? That's it. Yeah, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. Go settings. Okay. And click home for a second. He said that they actually already had a few pieces of their in there. Why don't we go all and say item? Yeah, they've got fertilizer, hydro soil. Okay. And um, uh, it's in their basic inventory. We can set up some categories. It's like that's, they only have those two. Okay. Like. Okay. No problem. So, Joe, how did you find that they already had some in there? Uh, I just went to the uh, grow item homepage. Or, yeah, I just searched okay. for all. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So let's add some categories, first of all, before we put in all of our themes. So we wanted our categories here, our soil, seeds, fertilizer, just a couple of soil, seeds, fertilizer, um, and we had Mulch, lights, containers, and plants. Okay. Mulch. Lights. Containers. The nice thing about this is that you can prepare your system when you plan it out that way. Then you know what your categories are, and when you go in and you put in your parts, you can already fit it into your categories. You can add them while you're there if you need, but it is nice to be able to prep, and then you can get things prepared and lined out so that you can put them in easier. So we want to go back to our PO. Is that a fair place to go? Can you go over that briefly? I know I we're talking about how it's, um, it's alphabetical, right? Yes. But there's a way you can put, you can prioritize one by just doing a, a, a period or something? Yeah. Period. yeah, basically what it is is that it's just a normal way that the things are searched. If you wanted things prior, you could do some sort of a special character, and that precedes an alpha character. So, so you could do a, a dash a soil, dash. and then soil would then be at the top? Correct. So let's try it. Go down to the bottom, go dash soil. So it, click on soil, go in front of it, dash in front just put a little minus sign, say edit. Okay. So basically yeah. what you did is you, you, you superseded the, uh, and what that is is it stays with it. It stays with it. It totally stays with it all the time. But what it is is alphabetically a hyphen, that dash would come before an A or, or a B or something. 
So you you're, you're, you're kind of tricking it, yeah. You can number it. Correct. So the, the thing that's interesting is when we sort on physical numeric values, uh, one always comes before ten. But sometimes if you're just sorting on like alpha characters, it can get kind of funky because like it starts reading across and it's trying to like alphabetize numbers and so there is a difference between <coughs> sorting alpha, real life alpha, and sorting text. So that's that's technical, but um, there there is a difference. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, that's great. Okay, so we'll just go back to our PO. Put it in. So she did the keyword last on our quick search, which took her right to the one that she was working on, which currently has zero line items right now. I want to, so I want to edit my line items. Oh, so that's all on her user though. On her user, like on yours, if you wanted to, you could easily go to PO homepage and find yours, or you could go PO last. If you've created one, it would do the same thing, and it would take you to your PO. Okay, so for our soil that we wanted to put in, just back here at the top, on, we are going to put in some potting soil and some organic grow bed soil. So, potting, and we don't have that in there, so we're going to add that new item number, and we received what? 30 bags, potting soil, and we want to monitor that, and this is in our soil, oh, I forgot it has that, that's right. Okay, so one thing that's kind of important here is as you're going down, usually on almost every page you start at the top and you work your way down, the place that has the top field where it says item number, that's, that's important. This is what you physically want it to be called, or how you're going to search it, or how you're going to like look it up, okay? The description, what she's entering right now, could be much, much longer, like, hey, this includes this, and this, and this, it's really good for this, like, that's where you put your lengthy one. Your item or part number, you don't want to use any special characters other than, like, dashes and underscores, or maybe spaces. You don't want to start getting into funky stuff like quotes, and this, and that, like, Try to keep that as simple as possible. That's almost like its little key element, if you will, of that particular item. And that's, we call it item number. It's technically, it's the part number field, okay? Perfect. So we just need to assign a cost per. These are probably... Five bucks. Sounds good. And we're going to sell them at $16.99. What would, what would a potted and soil bag help us out? What would be a, what would be a good cost? Yeah, this is cost, yeah, like yeah, us. That's, that's lean, are we going to do it by, by pounds? Or yeah. different pounds of bags? Okay, correct. Yeah, yeah, so we, could, if, you know, we could put that here too, like... How much um, are we selling, like a 50 pound bag? So you'll probably need to change the cost on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so How much um, is that bag cost? Probably cost, uh, our cost for probably about 1250 1250 Okay, great. And we'll sell it for... We want to sell it for... We want to do a markup? Okay. So we want to do a markup, then we go for... Uh, one, so, two, five. Yeah, and, and you're works. going to be surprised. There's a difference, okay? So if you check your profit margin, you're at... Even though you marked it up by 1.25, you're actually only going to be making 20% on that deal, okay? So you might have to play with it a little bit and be like, you know what, let's push that up a little bit. Does that look better? Okay. So what you can see is kind of helping you do some light math to kind of figure out what's going on, okay? Okay, so we'll get a 1.75 markup on it, and we're going to... Okay, so hang on, hang on, just oh, one second. sorry. That's okay. Um, don't, don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. So technically, she's still in the add mode. If she were to click add again, it would actually say, oh, but I, I just wanted to show you some of these other fields. Like, she's done this enough. She's like, oh, that's all we need. But there are technically a ton of other fields there that could potentially help you out if you needed it. What's your unit of measurement? Are we doing it by pound or is it by bag? Or is it an each? This would be an each, okay? Um, we could put our weight in there, whatever you think, as well, if we wanted. Yeah, there, there's tons of different fields that you can do, including Scroll down, see below those double lines right there? Do we want it showing on the web, yes or no? Like, what do we want to show on the web? Like, there's a bunch of other settings, and she just kind of skipped through them. But basically, 
uh, just kind of read this. Once you get familiar with it, you're able to go much, much faster. But when you first start, uh, you're going to want to just kind of take a little bit of time and kind of read through some of those pieces of the puzzle. So just hit back once and you'll be right back on the PO. Okay, no problem. So it, it actually went back, back and back. So hit back one more time and then hit refresh on this guy. You're on the, the PO. Now scroll down and you have an item. Okay, sounds good. We have our 50-pound bag of potting soil. We wanted to add some organic grow bed soil as well. Yes. The name. And we'll say we got in 25 bags of that. So this is where she's creating her generic name. So it's always going to be called organic potting soil. This little next little thing is the flip-flop between do we physically want to track it as an inventory item or is it kind of like a service or a labor type thing like special? It still goes on an invoice just the same. The main difference is, so are we trying to track cost of goods sold or is it something that I can use over and over again? Say I'm selling education or class time or something like that. You, we don't necessarily say, hey, I have a stock of 12 classes that I can sell. It's like, I can just sell class time forever and ever and ever. That's unlimited. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, so we are getting 40 pound organic soil bags in, and those would cost more than our last one's cost, right? Yeah. Yeah. That organic, so. 22.50. That sounds great. And do we want to use the sell price, or do we want to do the markup again? Uh, Let's double it. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. As the sell price or as the market? As the sell price. Now I noticed uh, on the last one, Shannon, you left the sixteen ninety nine sale price in there, but then you also did your markup. It's going to override to the markup, right? Isn't that? It will because I flipped this, so I told it to use okay, the, so the yes, sell, that's yes, use the sell price. And these will be sold as each as well, and it's taxable. We just put forty pounds in there. I don't, I, I don't know if that's up. a numeric bound or field or whatever. We, we can check it out. So, okay. This is also how you would assign your barcode if you did want it. There's a field right there. You can right. assign your barcode. So on the barcode, would you put just the numbers or how would you assign that? Well, it depends on if it's physically real or if you're going to create yeah, it. So say it's already added to the bags. You would literally grab that little barcode wand and go, to think. As a matter of fact, uh, just for fun, Janet, I'll grab yeah. one of these things that has a retail barcode on it. And we'll let you scan it in there. Okay, sounds great. You got one? That's not so wet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to fake it. Sorry, our organic so potting here's, soil. Here's the important piece. <laughs> if you're going to be putting barcode stuff, make sure that everything else is prepped. Because as soon as she presses that, it's virtually going to hit enter as if you're submitting the thing. So you can see what her cursor is. It's right there in the barcode thing. So as soon as she does that, it basically did the entire thing, and now if you scroll down, she actually has a little link that says BC instead of description, because that one actually has a barcode on it. Okay. So if you click that, it give you the number. It would. Go ahead and click it. And basically, at this point, it gets to this little spot. Okay. And once you actually say print barcode. Oh, there's 45 bucks. Okay. Okay. And choose your Dymo label printer. Dymo. And then however many copies you want. And she basically now has her little label right there that she just printed out. Okay. And the point could be really uh, green effort was. Is that a separate advertising? Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Can I just press yes, OK on this? Yes, click OK. Basically, it, it's, it's just okay. uh, virus protection. Sure I wasn't allowing you. Okay, so we just added our two soil. Do you want us to add more, or do you want us to leave these so that other people can get on and add them? Can we, can we, add, can we add a soil by, um, not by each, but by amount? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, bulk, like kind of a bulk soil? Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a scoop it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big bed that people sure. Okay. Hey, as soon as you start, let's go to the Word for just a second. Instead of going to Atlas, let's add a new little item, and then let's put a little bit more information on this. I love it. I love it. And this is by the pound. Now, is, is pound our, our smallest thing, or is ounce our smallest piece? Pound. 
Okay? So basically you have to determine like what's my smallest increment because you don't want to do this. Hey, I'm going to go buy it by the ton and then I'm going to sell it by the ounce and then I'm going to bring it in by the pound and then it's like, you, if you start mixing all your units of measurement, you're going to get in trouble. What you do is you kind of say, how am I going to buy it? How am I going to sell it? And then you figure out the, the kind of the, the least common denominator and then you run everything through it that way. So when you bring it in, like say you bought it literally by the ton, you would have to just do the conversion. And there's actually a way we can show you, Atlas can help you with that, but you would do the conversion. So, oh, that's 2,000 pounds, okay, versus one ton, okay. whatever. But you, you kind of get into, how do I want it to show up on my invoice? I want to sell it by the pound? Cool. I better bring it in by the pound, or at least convert it that way. If you okay. need to. Have, have okay. a conversion between the two. Years. Correct. And, and if you absolutely have to buy it by the ton, but you want to convert to the pound, you could use an internal build PO and say, I'm going to take four ton, and that's going to convert into X number of pounds of this. So you could have two separate item numbers. Here's what I got, and I'm going to convert it, and now I'm going to be able to sell it. And that's an internal build. It's like a giant mixer PO that you can kind of like manipulate oh, yeah. those inventory pieces. Great question. Regarding Perfect. selling it, you could just have your digital scale, and it came out at three point three pounds. Sure, sure. Even though it's not an ounce, you can still That's keep okay. it in the same, yep. mm -hmm. can't be in the same uh, so unit. So per, per pound is great. Per pound is great. Let's great. just call do it bulk soil for right now. Else there? Are we What's okay? that? Do we want anything else there, or are we okay to go put it in? No, I just, the only piece that I wanted to come here is I wanted to let you know you can't be like pounds and ounces and like, it, it gets mixed up. If you figure out your least common denominator and then play accordingly. And if you can't play accordingly, it's going to say you need to do one other step because you need to kind of create that conversion in the system so that it physically knows what's going to happen. And pounds is a lot easier. Pounds is great. Pounds is great. Okay, let's do pounds. Perfect. Okay, that sounds great. So we'll go up here and we'll add bulk soil. How many pounds did we get in of this bulk soil? Ton. Like a ton? Uh, yeah. Okay, so 2,000. Bulk soil. That, that was a great question. I love yeah, it. That is great. And this is in our dashboard. Okay. And then here in the description, I would probably put something like sold per pound as well, even in the description. Wow. I am having a hard time typing your keyboard. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Bulk soil sold by the pound. So the cost per pound for soil. So you'd have to do your conversion. So your 2,000 pounds, your one ton, so much. how much was your one ton? And then you would reverse that back out so that you're like, okay, cost at a time, pound. what's the cost per pound? This is a little bit of light math with a calculator. So you're going to go 2000 it was $2,000 per, per a ton. Okay, so, so a buck, dollar, buck a pound. dollar per pound. A buck a pound, that's great. Okay, and are we going to do a markup on this or are we going to do a sell price per pound? We'll do a sell, a sell price. At what price? At $1.50. $1.50. Okay, we'll use the sell price. And this will be by pounds. Okay. So that's all we changed was our unit of measurement mm -hmm. right there. Okay. okay, so hang on. Let's put a, a barcode for this one as well. Okay, great. And we're going we're gonna to just make our own. We're going to call Auto. bulk underscore soil just for fun. Well, so, so when you make your barcodes, you have, you have three different options you can kind of do. One, you can use the retail one. Say something's already pre-retailed. It's great to just harvest those right off, just like we did with that little Thing. You can make your own, or you could just kind of like say, you know what, I don't really need a barcode. You could also use the word auto, and then we will assign one for you. It's always unique as well. So that's a keyword. There's a little piece off to the side there that says, hey, if you want, you can use auto, free willy, which is basically enter it in there, or a physical, physical barcode number. Either way, it'll, it'll generate the pieces. Awesome. Okay. And we can scroll down, and it is there on our PO. So now we can sell this by the pound. So just for fun, why don't we click on the barcode generator there as well. And why don't we create a little barcode for that one. You'll notice how it looks like completely different compared to the other barcode. Those, those are different technologies that we use to actually. So she now has created it as soon as you put it in the, uh, the, the line so, so basically what happens is, is at real at runtime, this little widget, this is a little flash widget, it draws the barcodes at runtime. So if you wanted something changed on it, you could literally be like, mm, I just want it like this, or you know, like 
B dash soil. If you wanted that to be the barcode, you can either change it physically in the thing, or you can change it here on the widget. But what it is is the widget doesn't know what's going to happen until something gets passed to it. Oh, I better respond. So on the fly, it's kind of creating those barcode. And there's like trillions of line permutations, right? I mean, it, yeah, there's yeah, more yeah, yeah. Uh, barcodes than there are objects on Earth. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically what we do inside of Atlas, and there, there literally are probably like 10 or 20 different styles of barcodes. Mm -hmm. You have QR codes, you have you know, all these different little things, 2D and, and some of the different pieces of the puzzle. We use two basic technologies. We use basic UPC, which is the standard retail piece for the puzzle, okay? And the yeah, other, anything can read it. Yeah, so anything can read it. The other piece that we use is a thing called uh, 28B, 128B, which is, it allows for alphas and numerics and spaces and different little pieces. That's how we're able to kind of do this bulk underscore soil, okay? So we use a, it's a, click on your advanced settings for just a quick second. It's a, that link right there. Okay, so down towards the bottom, it actually says barcode type, second from the bottom, code 128B or UPCA, right? There's, there's a bunch of different styles and, uh, they basically allow you to kind of do that. But this is just a little widget, if you will, that kind of helps you. It's not required at all, but if you want a barcode scan, it, it allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Shannon, go ahead. Okay, perfect. So do we want to add more, or do we want to leave that? I'm just going to show it on my PO homepage. It's not happy because I didn't have an idea of how much it costs us. So we can go back in and fix that, or we're going to add more products. Let's fix that flag. I don't like <laughs> if we're adding more, we would probably just want to wait and fix it at the end. Then we would have our final cost for the entire PO. But if this is all we're getting right now on this particular PO, we could go fix that and satisfy it and make it happy. Should we do that? Let's go ahead and make it happy and okay. then we'll come back in. So I'm going to go into this PO and I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to edit the main because I know this is actually where it's unhappy, right here. So we don't have an amount it's telling me to check the map because we have all these line items now that have prices and values and costs that we brought them in at, but we didn't put any price for the original. So that's in the main information right here. So we're going to go in and edit the main. And right here, it actually adds it up for me. I love that. It tells me that it's 937.50. Okay, so we're going to edit that PO. And it's happy now, it's satisfied. We have our line items still. We can go back to our PO homepage. So when we put in, and there's no flag anymore. When we put in the money, we don't have to. We just put it in and then make sure that the cents point is where it needs to be, and it will automatically determine if it's a hundred thousand, fifty thousand. It will determine that we don't have to put two thousand two comma. No. So yeah. It will automatically. We just have to make it, sure. It'll actually, it'll actually give you an error if you enter commas or dollar signs or anything like that. Okay. Oh, well, well, I'm just. Eventually what has to happen is it has to be stored in the database. So the database is like, whoa, I only accept numeric values, and that comma technically throws me out of a numeric value. Oh, okay. it's, it's kind of technical, but um, yes, uh, there you can do shorthand. You don't have to go, so say you had 2000, 2000, that's it. You don't have to go 0 .00 or anything like that. Um, it'll, it'll kind of figure that out, no problem for you. So a lot of shorthands. Shortcuts. And that comes at the beginning as well a lot because when you bring in a lot of purchase orders, especially from a vendor, you have your invoice right there. It tells you how much it costs. So as you're going through, you put in, oh, it cost me this much. This is how much I was charged. And then you go through and add your line items or you got this many of this inventory item if you've gone through them a lot and you're not setting it up. So, But if you're doing it this way or if you don't know the cost, you can go back and change it. Okay. Okay, any awesome. questions? Um, how many of you guys actually have a, uh, uh, are, are they ready for lunch for us, do you know, or? I'm not sure, Santi tells us that. Okay, okay. Santi's probably over there eating. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know I think I, Chuck I, I, came I, out. This is probably a good so. point to kind of stop and kind of do some lunch. But uh, what we'd like to do is when we get back, in order to kind of re-enter the will, anybody who has a computer, we're going to give you as an assignment, okay? You're going to take this many items, you're going to take this many items, and we're going to kind of help it run that way. That way you'll physically be hammering things in like that, all right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and take our break for lunch.